I've always been a huge fan of credit cards because it gives me flexibility, it helps me build my credit score, and of course, it gives me cash back. In 2023 alone, I think I've gotten nearly 1,000 ringgit just from cashback credit cards from my multiple cards. So today, I'll share four of my favorite credit cards for you to choose from if you're a Malaysian in 2024. And I'll be looking more of it from a lens of cashback because if you go and apply for credit cards that give you points, just from my basic you know, research, you will be getting less value when you go for points instead of cashback unless you're someone who spends a lot of money. I'm talking more than 10,000 ringgit every single month. And obviously, which one is the best is going to be up to you and your spending habits. But I'll be looking at it from three lenses. One is obviously how much cashback you're going to get. But two, what are the minimum spending requirements, if any? And three, what categories can you spend on to get this cashback and how flexible they are with these categories? But before I get there, I must say this. Credit cards are great for all of the benefits that I was talking about earlier in this video. But it's only good for those of you who can manage your money well. If you're someone who, you know, you don't think that you're so good with your money or if you're someone who spends way too much money, then you should stay far, far away from credit cards because the interest rates are extremely high. It can be 16, 18% a year. And if you get into credit card debt, it can really destroy your finances. So yeah, if that's you, if you're someone who isn't good at managing money yet, stay far away from credit cards. Just close off this video. Go and check out my other video on what I would do if I had to restart my financial journey in 2024. Anyway, I'll break this video down into two parts. One is I will start off with the entry level credit cards and then I'll move on to the more intermediate level credit cards for the bigger spenders. Also, I'll leave the link to all of the credit cards that I talk about today for you guys to sign up. I'll leave it down in the description below. And depending on which credit card you choose, you might get some sign up rewards when you apply and get it activated. Last year, I applied for two of these credit cards from this list and I got over 1,000 ringgit just in sign up rewards. So starting off with the entry level category, we will be talking about the UOB1 card. Honestly, this is one of the best credit cards out there for those of you who are, you know, fresh grads or for those of you who are still on a lower income. Honestly, even if you're someone who is on a higher income, this credit card could still be good for you. They have two versions of this. One is called the classic card. So this one has a lower minimum spend and a lower cashback, but they also have a platinum card, which is higher minimum spend and obviously more cashback as well. So just choose depending on, you know, which category you're in. Obviously, if you're not someone who spends a lot of money, then just go for the classic card. So the first reason that I think that this is a good credit card for those of you who are still fresh grads is that the minimum income to get approved for this card is only 2,000 ringgit per month, which I assume is most of us. If you're someone who's earning less than this, then I don't think any banks out there will give you a credit card. And honestly, I don't think that you should be getting a credit card in the first place anyway. This card does come with an annual fee, but you will get it waived for the first three years. By the way, a tip for you guys, for any credit card that you own, if you get charged an annual fee on it, just give your bank a call, especially if you use the credit card a lot and ask for a waiver. Most of the times they will waive it because you know they still want your business. Moving on to the cashback part. So you'll be getting a 10% cashback of up to 10 ringgit per category for the following categories. Petrol, dining, groceries, and grab. All you have to do is spend at least 500 ringgit every single month. If you're on the platinum card, you will also get a 10% cashback, but your maximum cap per category will be increased to 15 ringgit. So yeah, like I said, just choose based on how much money you spend every single month. Obviously, if you're not gonna spend 1,500 ringgit every month, then just go for the classic card so you can guarantee that you will get this cashback. So for most of us, I think that all of these categories are pretty relevant to us. I mean, stuff like dining and groceries, all of us have to eat every month, right? So you should be getting that pretty easily. And even the Grab one, you can just top up your Grab Pay wallet and then you can use it to spend again on dining and stuff like that. So those three categories, pretty easy. I guess the only one that some of you might not hit is the petrol one if you only use public transport. If you have your own car and you do pay for petrol, then you should be hitting the maximum cashback of 40 ringgit per month pretty easily. As of the time that I'm recording this, if you apply for this credit card, get it approved and make a few transactions, then you can stand a chance to win a PS5. Even if you don't win that, you will get a guaranteed gift of a 300 ringgit touch and go voucher. So just sign up with the link, I'll leave it down in the description below. Moving on, the next entry level credit card that I'll be talking about is the Maybank 2 Gold Cards. Every single year when I make a list of the best credit cards for cashback, this one will always make the list. Over time, you know, it doesn't give you as good rewards as it did back in the days because Maybank has reduced the amount of cashback that they're giving, but I still think it's a pretty good card and I still like it. So this card has a slightly higher minimum income of 2,500 ringgit a month for you to get approved. 
But the main reason that I like this card is that unlike other cashback credit cards, there is no minimum spend for you to be eligible for the cashback. So even if you spend, let's say, 50 ringgit, 100 ringgit, whatever the amount is, you will still be entitled to the cashback. You don't have to spend a certain amount for you to be eligible. So as the name implies, when you apply for this credit card, you will get two credit cards. One is the Amex and you also get another card. You can choose between MasterCard and Visa but you will only get cashback when you use the Amex card. So if you use the MasterCard or Visa, I think you'll only get points. And like I said earlier, I don't like points, so I don't use this card at all. Um, as soon as I got it, I just kept it in some drawer, I think. I don't even know where it is. It's just now collecting dust. So yeah, I only use the Amex card. Anyway, you will get a 5% cashback when you use the Amex card on any spend except for government bodies. So this includes PTPTN, utilities, as well as e-wallet reloads. So yeah, I like it because it gives you flexibility. You can really spend anywhere except those three categories that I mentioned earlier. And 5% is pretty good. But there is two downsides to this card. One is you will only get cash back on the Amex card if you use it on weekends, so Saturdays and Sundays. What I would do is I would try to sometimes delay my purchases, you know, so stuff like uh, if I want to buy something on Shopee or if I wanted to pay for my phone bills, I would just do it on the weekend so that I can get this 5% cash back. The other thing is this card is an Amex card, which means that not all merchants will accept it. Most of the bigger ones, so if you go for grocery shopping, if you pay for your phone bill, if you want to buy from Shopee and Lazada, Grab, all of them, they will accept Amex. But, you know, because it is Amex, some of the smaller merchants, they may not accept it. So there are pros and cons to using this card. I just like keeping it with me. Like I said, you know, I would sometimes delay my purchases to the weekend just so that I can get this 5% cashback. By the way, if you're someone who uses it for, you know, Shopee or Grab, which I do a lot, Make sure that when you make a payment, you use this as your payment method because then you will get the cashback. If you decide to use this card to top up your GrabPay wallet or your Shopee Pay wallet, then you won't get the cashback because that's considered an e-wallet reload. So yeah, just make sure that you pay directly with this Amex card. Also, another benefit of having a Maybank card is that if you want to make a big purchase, so let's say you want to buy a new iPhone or you want to buy a new washing machine, Usually, most of these places, when they offer EPP or 0% installment, they will accept Maybank credit cards. So they won't accept cards from all banks, but usually they do accept Maybank. Moving on to the more intermediate cards, the third one that I will be talking about is the RHB Shell Visa credit card. So this one is actually one of my favorite cards right now, and it is my everyday card. I have been getting around 60 ringgit in cashback every single month. I could go higher, I just don't spend so much on petrol anymore. The minimum income required for this card is only 2,000 ringgit. So you might be wondering, why don't I consider this an entry-level card? Basically, for you to hit that highest tier cashback, you will have to spend 2,500 ringgit in a month. And obviously, if you're someone who's earning 2,000 ringgit, there's no way that you're spending 2,500 ringgit. Or if you are, then you need to review your spending and you shouldn't get a credit card in the first place. But anyway, let's go through the cashback you can get for using this card. First, it gives you a cashback of 12% when you spend on petrol. So if you're someone who spends, let's say, 400 ringgit a month in petrol, you should be getting 50 ringgit in cashback, which is huge. The catch is, it only works with Shell because I think there's some partnership between RHB and Shell. So you must pump petrol at Shell to get this 12% cashback. I don't know about you guys, but I have no loyalty when it comes to petrol brands. I will honestly just pump it anywhere that's convenient. But just because of this card, now I will only use Shell because I do want the 12% cashback. It is quite a bit of money. So I guess the partnership, the marketing, it did work on me. The second thing is, I actually don't spend so much on petrol anymore because I don't really use my car so much. I use more public transport. So I'm not really maximizing this 12% cashback. I'm not really getting the most out of it. Actually, that's probably a good thing, right? It's probably a good thing that I'm not spending so much money anymore. Yeah, it's a good thing. Anyway, this card will also give you an additional cashback of 5% if you spend on stuff like groceries, any online spend, utilities, and e-wallet reloads, and the maximum you'll get is 50 ringgit every month. So this is the part that I really like. They just lumped all four categories into one. You can spend it wherever you want and you will be eligible for the cashback. To hit that 50 ringgit cashback cap, you'll just have to spend 1,000 ringgit between these four categories. I think it's pretty manageable if you're someone on a higher income and spend a bit more money. For me, personally, just from my utility bills and my e-wallet reloads that I make, quite consistently, I can easily hit this number every month. So what I would do is every month I would spend, you know, exactly 2,500 ringgit. So I would spend 1,000 ringgit on utilities and e-wallet reloads. 
I'll spend another 1,005 on whatever else, even though I'm not getting cash back, just to hit that minimum spend. And then I will completely stop using this card except for petrol because that's another category and I will still be getting the 12% cash back. Personally, I don't think that this card is so great. I don't think that the cash back is really good if you spend less than 2,500 a month. But you know, I guess it's completely up to you. If you still want it, you will still get something. It's just quite a bit less. Another plus for Muslims about this card is that it is also Sharia compliant. But the big, the big, huge thing that I don't like about this card is that it doesn't support Apple Pay, meaning you can't add this RHB credit card to your Apple Pay wallet. Um, I guess it's not a huge deal to most people, but you know, it's just more a convenience thing. Now I still just gotta still manually swipe this card whenever I want to make a payment. If you apply now with the link in the description, you can stand a chance to win an iPhone 14 Pro Max. I actually just applied for this card sometime last year and I managed to win nothing. So yeah, if you're unlucky like me, again, you will still get a guaranteed gift of a 300 ringgit touch and go voucher. When I got this last year, they also gave me some activation rewards. I think it was around 200 ringgit and they also offered me a 0% loan um, for 12 months, which I obviously took because I just took that money, put it in some investment and I'm going to make my money from that. I don't know if they're still offering it in 2024 because back then, you know, they said that the promotional period was until 2023 only. But, you know, just keep an eye on it. When you receive your card, what they did last year was they gave me a brochure, then I found out about it, then I made the spending and I got the 0% loan. So I just keep an eye on it. I don't know if they still have it, but yeah, it could be good. When I got this card last year, they also had some extra activation rewards of I think around 200 ringgit and it did offer me a 0% loan as well, which I did take up. So. I don't know if they still have this this year because um, when I looked at it last year, it says the promotional period was only until 2023, but I found out about it because when they gave me the card, I got some brochure which gave me all this information. So yeah, I, I don't know if they still have it, but just keep an eye on it when you receive your card. The fourth and final card that I'll be talking about today is the standard charted Simply Cash credit card. What a long name. But anyway, yeah, this one, honestly, it's not very different than RHB one. The minimum income is slightly higher at 3,000 ringgit, but you will also have to spend 2,500 ringgit every single month for you to be eligible for the highest tier cashback. So there's two big differences of this card versus the RHB card. One is instead of utilities that RHB is offering, they've swapped it out to dining instead for this standard chartered card. And two is that they've lumped all of the categories together into one and the maximum cashback you'll get is 60 ringgit. So it's not like, you know, the RHB one where there's one category for patrol and then one category for everything else. This one, everything is just lumped together as one. So this card is going to be probably better for two types of people. One is for people who don't spend on patrol or for those of you who are very loyal to a patrol brand that is not Shell. So let's say if you've always used Petronas, Petron, whatever it is, and you don't want to switch to Shell, then this card would be better for you. And the second type of person that would probably prefer this card is for people who don't pay utility bills and would rather have dining as a cashback category instead. And I guess there is a third type of person that would like this card. The person who really insists on using Apple Pay, who wants the convenience of it, because yes, Standard Chartered is linked with Apple Pay, so you can add this credit card to your Apple phone. This card is also offering the highest sign-up reward right now, so you can get 800 ringgit in touch and go vouchers just for signing up and making a few transactions. Just make sure that when you sign up, you give your EPF statement because you will only get 800 ringgit if you provide your EPF statement. If you don't, you will only be getting a 500 ringgit touch and go voucher. I have no idea why um, they want your EPF statement. Obviously, I know why they want their EPF statement, but I don't know why they have different amounts of cashback if you give your EPF statement versus if you don't. But you know, that's just the TNCs, just follow it. Anyway, these are four of my favorite cashback credit cards for Malaysians in 2024. Let me know in the comments which one is your favorite and let me know if I missed out on any credit card that's giving even better rewards than this. Anyway, thanks for watching this video to the end guys. Give us a huge thumbs up and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. See you guys in the next one. Peace out.